Hi there, welcome to 90% Knitting. This is episode 365, and I'm Lisa, also known as Fibernim. Today is a beautiful sunny Tuesday here in the Laurel Highlands. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> it's a little breezy and chilly, which is why I have a shawl on. But it's so pretty, and I couldn't not record out here. I usually, when I record out on our deck, I usually record in the morning so that the sun is still behind the trees that are behind you. Um, and it's less glary. I have less shadows, fewer shadows. However, um, this wasn't actually my plan today. We're back to that. I was going to record tomorrow. However, tomorrow we're supposed to have the S word. I refuse to say it because... It's late April and it should be gone by now. <laughs> but overnight tonight and tomorrow they're calling for it. So I decided to take advantage of the beautiful weather today and shadows be darned. You can, you know what my face looks like. If I'm sort of shadowy, <laughs> hopefully it won't bother you. But it's very pretty and blue skies, birds, ambient traffic noise from the road outside. Our house. Anyway, how are you? I hope you're doing well. It's probably been close to a couple of weeks since we recorded, since I recorded. Um, the, only, the other thing about me sitting at this angle rather than the other angle is you don't get to see the bird feeders. So I apologize. You're going to miss out on any birds that might be making an appearance. And I will try to not be distracted by the birds that are over here. <laughs> Maybe you'll see some behind me. They fly around a lot because that's what birds do. They fly. I hope you've been well. I hope you've been getting to enjoy some springtime weather or autumnal weather if you're in the southern hemisphere. Let me share with you what I'm wearing since I often forget to do that or remember later on. This is a really lovely shawl that I made many years ago and I hardly ever wear it. I love it. It's actually probably one of the knitted items that I am most proud of making ever. Um, the pattern is Caricia or Caricia. I'm not actually sure how it is pronounced. See, now this is really weird because I can see it on the screen, but I can also see the reflection of it off the glass of my phone. So that's kind of odd. Anyway, it is a triangular shawl. It was designed by Anne Hansen. And this is from back in the day when I used to knit fancy stuff, like lace, <laughs> lace patterns. And this was, if I remember correctly, eh, it was lace knitting, but not knitted lace. There's a difference. Lace knitting is where you have a lace pattern, but you have a rest row. Whereas knitted lace, you're doing actual lace patterning on both sides of the work. I think this had rest rows. It's, it was, when, when did I do this? I wrote it down. I finished it in April, 2010. I had started it the year before, like May of the year before. Um, I made it out of hand spun. This yarn, this yarn was hand spun out of some Bam Huey fiber from New Hue Hand Spuns. I had to look up her website to see if she's even still dying. Um, Cheryl Newhouse. Um, I used to love her fiber when I first started spinning. Um, I bought a lot of it. Matter of fact, I probably still have some in my stash from a decade ago. Um, yeah, it's a merino bamboo blend. This was the Sunbeams colorway. I'm not sure if she does repeatable colorways. I think she does, but um, yeah, it was so much fun to spin and it's so lightweight and I absolutely love this edge. Isn't that beautiful? Ugh, anyway. This is definitely one of my favorite and favorite pieces of knitting that I've made over the years that I'm most proud of because I didn't mess it up and I spun the yarn for it. Um, I was going to say, I was trying to remember when I first started spinning with a wheel. I had tried drop spindling prior to my wheel and that didn't go well. Um, I want to say I probably got my first wheel late in the year in 2007 because I started really knitting earlier that year and I don't think it took me long to decide to want to spin. It might have been 2008 when I got my wheel 
my first wheel, which was a used Traveler that I got off of Craigslist and Ashford Traveler, which is still my favorite wheel. I love it. Um, but yeah, I started I started knitting with my hand spun pretty quickly, and I did catch on to spinning pretty quickly back in the day too. So this wasn't too far into my spinning career that I spun this yarn, and then I knit with it. So that makes me happy too. Anyway. <laughs> And my husband is working in the porch room, which is also right behind you, although I'm sure he's not paying any attention to me because he's really busy today, but it's always so funny to be out here whenever he's in there. I don't think he can hear me though, so. And just as a side note, we will get to the knitting, honest. Um, <laughs> yesterday he had to go into the office, and so he wasn't here all day, and my daughter was not here all day. <laughs> I was home alone and I realized that the one thing that I have really been missing about being home alone this past year that I hadn't really realized I was missing was talking to myself out loud. I found myself just talking to myself all day, narrating what I was doing and I think that's how I process things is talking to myself. Not just weird babble but like just talking to myself. I don't know. It was strange, but it was a revelation. It's like, huh, I have missed doing this. Okay, now the wind is picking up, but it still feels nice and I'm not going inside. I am drinking coffee though. Oh yeah, that's nice. If the sun goes behind a cloud, then I won't have as many shadows. All right, so what did I want to tell you about today? Um, I have some finished objects. I've got some works in progress. Um, I have a new cast on that is partially done. I have some, I'm going to talk a little bit about some spinning, although it's not noteworthy and I didn't bring it out to show you. Um, a little bit of nature mail talk, um, a little bit of Zoom chat talk, and then I have the giveaway for the Sure of You headband that I showed you in the last episode. I drew the winner for that right before I sat, came out here to podcast. Okay, now it's behind a cloud and I'm chilly, so I'm glad I have the shawl. And then I have some shop news for you, and I have a little bit of what is bringing me joy lately. So, let's get into it. And, wow, the birds are really happy. <laughs> it was funny, when I first came out here, Babette followed me out, and so the birds were like, oh, we're going to not be here, because she was, like, stalking around, checking out the area where the birds hang out. But she went back in. I think she decided it was too chilly out here for her. So, anyway, all right, let's get started. Um, finished-ish objects. I have two more, yes, two more finished shortish socks for my shortish sock project. Um, if you've been watching the last few episodes, you know I'm on a quest to knit myself 10 mismatched shortish socks using up some of my larger quantities of sock weight leftovers. And Number four, I, I know it was at least on the needles. I can't remember if it was finished when I recorded last time, so I brought it out to show you again. So oh, that's so distorting because I'm, like I said, I'm seeing it in the camera and reflected off the camera. Um, so this is my bedazzled base in the 12 Days of Christmas colorway. Again, I can't remember if it was finished when you saw it last or not, um, but it is finished now, obviously. So this is my fourth sock. Um, I did finally start wearing my first pair of socks, the first two socks, which were both out of bounce, t different colorways. Um, so I have this one in my sock drawer with the other bedazzled sock, which was out of the hypothesis colorway, which you saw last time. So it's sort of another mismatched pair. So they're finished. And I have a fifth one, and this fifth, number five and number six I'm doing out of my Mountain Tweed BFL base. So this is my positivity colorway, which was my one of my anniversary colorways a couple of years ago. So this one's finished, and I just started number six, um, which I did not bring out, but there's not very much to show you. There's just about the cuff, um, and that's another one on the Mountain Tweed BFL base, and that is Wild Honey, which was one of the colorways in my, um, my collection, the Softer Side, Softer Side collection, I believe I called it. <laughs> That was from a few years ago, too. So anyway, the the shortish socks are coming along, and I really do like having them in my wardrobe. I get so much wear out of them. 
I may just keep going and keep making mismatched shortest socks because it's not like I don't have the yarn for them. And just a recap, I do have my general recipe um, in my project page for all these. I'm putting all 10 of these socks in the same project on Ravelry. Um, and I do have the project spelled out there. But just to let you know, I am doing a two, I'm casting on 60 stitches, US one needles, um, doing a two by one rib for 16 rounds and then knitting straight for 18 rounds and then doing um, the heel flap. I'm doing that for 18 slip stitches worth and then um, doing my gusset decreases and knitting out to fit my foot, which is approximately nine, nine and a quarter inches is what I aim for. So. And they're taking right around 30 grams of yarn to do one, between 27 and 30. I think this one was 27 grams. So thereabouts. So that's how that project's going. Um, next up is another sock whip, which you did see the last time. You know what, it was funny, I was gathering this. I haven't actually worked on this in maybe a week, uh, and I thought I'd finished the second sock, but I haven't. So let me slip this one on a sock blocker. And this is my sock experiment project um, with the sock tube that I bought from Nitty Bow Fiber Co. So here's the first one, and as you can see, it is a little bit short which I told you last time, it ended up being about a quarter of an inch shorter than I would like it to be to fit well. Um, so when I did the second sock, now the first sock, again, it was a learning experience. I learned I had to go down to US one needles to match the gauge of the cranked sock tube. And I realized I had to make my foot a little bit longer. I tried on the second sock, which, what that is, somebody's got a, Radley trailer going down the road here. Um, okay, why is there a weird long string here? We'll tuck the weird long string in. Um, here's the second one. It is going to be short too. <laughs> I measured, like I'm on the toe now, but after I cut it and started doing the toe, I measured again. I'm not going to be able to get this on the sock blocker because of how the needles are here. Let me see if I can pull it a little bit. There we go. So I don't know. I mean, I purposely went out um, a couple extra rounds before I started cutting for the toe, but it's still, you can see even on the sock blocker, it's going to be short. So unless I do some creative lengthening of the toe to make up the difference, it's going to end up probably being about the same size as the first one. I don't know what's causing my issue. Um, I don't know if it's just that I'm not getting a good accurate measurement because it's still on the needles when I need to cut for the, well no it's not on the needles because I would have finished the heel and then I'm measuring out the tube. I don't know. I don't know what my issue is. <laughs> just having an issue. But it's going to be short. I think actually what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make this one the same as this and then I'm going to see if my mom wants them because she likes these kind of socks too. So it'll be a little too short for me. I think what I'm going to do though, whenever I do the next pair to try to remediate this issue is, so I have the needles in to start the next pair. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit my cuff and then I'm going to measure down the whole way to where I want to start the toe and then cut in and do the toe. And that way I will have a sock tube the way I would have it if I was intentionally knitting a sock that I was going to put an afterthought heel in. And that way I can just measure and hopefully be more accurate and get my heel in in the right place and have it at the right length. So I think that's how I'm going to try this next one. We'll see. I mean, I know it could be because I'm working on US zeros instead of US ones. That's obviously changing things. Um, I don't know. I just don't know. It's very troubling because I don't like doing the same mistake twice. And I seem to have done that. Anyway, I'm having fun with it though. I really like the yarn. You've seen it before. It's 
that fun speckle. I think he called um, the colorway was Here Comes Peter Cottontail. So it was a very Eastery color. It's interesting. I, I think I pointed out like the one half of the sock blank, the color is a little bit more intense than on the second half. But I figure the way I'm doing these socks, by the time I get down here, I'll, that will probably be its own pair of socks. So it won't really matter. Not that it's going to matter anyway, because I make mismatched socks on purpose. So <laughs> who cares? Oh, and the yarn is um, Knit Pick Swish. That's what he dyed the sock yarn on. And the minis that I'm using are my bounce base. Um, I'm doing that in three different colors. This is Vivid Violet. And then, sorry, now I've got hair in my mouth. Um, uh, Aqua Shock and Fuchsia. So. Okay, moving on from there. I will tell you what I did not bring out to show you. <laughs> um, I did not bring out the Amberly shawl because remember when I showed it to you last time and I'm like, I'm almost done with the body because I was adding one extra repeat. Maybe I was done with the extra repeat. I don't remember. I don't think I was. But anyway, all of the body is done now. I did the seventh, like the extra repeat. That part's finished. I just had to do the border. And I was so optimistic that I thought, oh, this could almost be done by the time you see it next. It's not. I have not even started the border and the main reason for that is um, I kept forgetting to wind the yarn. <laughs> I got the skeins out of my project bag and sat them and I'm like I have to wind these and I kept forgetting and I was really busy and I never wanted to run back upstairs to get them and so they never got wound until I think I wound them Saturday evening because Bill and I were going to be taking a ride on Sunday. He needed, he bought a piece of equipment um, that was up in Erie and so I said I'll ride along. <laughs> And I, I mean, that was partly to spend time with him, although we're together all the time anyway. But it was also because I knew that would guarantee me pretty much an eight hour chunk of knitting time because he did all the driving. <laughs> so I thought, oh, well, I'll take that along and I'll work on Amberly. But there's some stitches in the border that were not in the body of the shawl. And I just didn't have the brain power to really process that and make sure I was getting it right in the car. So I didn't work on that. I took it along, but it did not see any work. Um, I think I also took a sock along, probably like, I, I may have been finishing that, that positivity sock. I had that along, didn't work on that. The project that I did work on, which I'll show you in a second. Um, actually, I'll show you now, because <laughs> that was sort of a seg. The project that I did work on is this mitt. I'm gonna put it on to show you, well, I have to scooch my ring around to get it on here okay look at it isn't it cool <laughs> so i took um virtual vogue knitting live was last weekend and i did two classes so well, i did three classes technically but two of them were a part one and a part two to the same class and that was a spinning class i'll talk about that a little bit later um, but the other one was uh with Alex Bird and the class was on Rosamine. I believe I'm pronouncing it right. I know the R is supposed to be rolled. I can't do rolled R's very well. Despite years and years of French in high school and college, I still cannot roll my R's. Rosa, Rosamina. <laughs> it's an Estonian inlay color work technique, which I had really never heard of before until I was watching Knitting the Stash. Um, a few episodes ago, Melissa mentioned it and I thought, oh, well, that's cool. And it was shortly after I listened to her pod or saw her podcast that, and her talking about it, that I saw that Vogue was offering a class on it. I thought, cool, I'm going to take that class and learn about it. And I did not bring my swatch out, but you get the idea. The swatch I did on DK Wade and, during the class, and it was so much fun. These are all floats. So unlike regular color work, you're not knitting with your contrast colors. They're just floats. You're always just knitting with your main color. So um, now I, this is the, Hil the Hilja, H-I-L-J-A um, pattern, which is by Alex Bird, who taught the class. Um, and I decide, decided to go for this because I really wanted to try something a little bit more intricate. And now I will say, just like any other color work, 
it's best done with non-superwash yarn. So this would have been preferable to have done like in my ridge top fingering weight base. However, I decided to do this at the last minute, um, literally like Sunday morning before we were leaving on that car trip. So I bought the pattern, printed it out, and then went rummaging for yarn that I could use. And in my rummaging, um, I found this, which is yarn left over from uh, the jukebox cardi that I had been knitting for a few years and then abandoned because it was turning out way too big and the gauge was off and I decided I'm not knitting, I'm not knitting this. So this is what the yarn, this, most of this yarn was from that, at least the blue and the green. So this is my bedazzled base superwash. Again, not optimal, but it worked. And mainly I was doing this because I wanted to play with the technique and practice it. I didn't really care that it was perfect as far as anything else. So peacock in bedazzled the green is lime in bedazzled and then the lighter color is um, one strand of my bounce base in plain vanilla so the white and I held it together with a strand of fluff which is my mohair silk um, in wisp so it's a pale pale gray so the way you do this um, you carry these floats and then when you want to make the design you're carrying it in the front while you're knitting the background stitches and then you bring it to the back and that's how these are all made that's a very quick thumbnail of how you do that um, but in order for it to have a full look you double strand the the floats I'm gonna take this off my hand so I don't have to keep standing here or sitting here like this so you can see those are all double stranded and that gives it a much more filled in look. Now this top and bottom motif, which are both the same, it, it worked a lot better in this yarn. This middle motif had much longer floats in a couple of places and it looks a little sloppy because the yarn is super washed and it doesn't have fibers to hold it in place the way non super wash would. So that's understandable. But otherwise, I think it worked out pretty well. The really cool thing about this kind of color work is you can adjust the tension of it as you go. Um, in the class, she was showing us how like after you do a few rounds, you can stop and like take the end of your needle or take a tapestry needle and just kind of pull on the stranding and get the tension just right and then you can continue. Since I was in the car, I didn't do it that way. I just did the whole thing and then at the very end before I wove in the ends um, and she has you tie them off kind of in a knot to stabilize them. Um, before I did that I went through the whole mitt and I adjusted the tension on my my stranding and that seemed to work pretty well. Um, let's see what else can I tell you about this. She was talking about the way she does her colors is she uses bobbins so like the way when you're doing intarsia a lot of people use bobbins to manage their different colors of yarn um, I'm not a fan of bobbins in general um, or butterflies anything that's kind of lumpy at the end and dangling isn't great um, for me not my preferential way of dealing with it so I did what Franklin Franklin Habit suggested when I took his intarsia class a while back and just pulled off like an arm's length of yarn, well, two arm lengths for each color since it has to be doubled, and, and cut it and then just worked with it and let it dangle. That worked super well on this because as you're working, you're working in the round, so the first pass of the stranding leaves the yarn over here but then when you come back around you're here and the yarn you need to work with is over here so there's this really creative little loopy thing you do and that was a lot of fun to learn too but when you're doing that in rows that have two different colors happening at once and you have to do the loopy thing on either one or both of them it really helped I found to be able to just pull those long strands through so that they're where they need to be within that loop. Um, it worked well for me anyway. Your mileage may vary and this may not make any sense to you what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but if you ever have an opportunity to take this class with her, I don't, I'm sure maybe other people teach it as well, but I know she um, really is one of the foremost people who teaches this and um, has patterns out. I don't, I don't think she's got a book out on it, but I think unless I'm imagining it, she might be working on a book about technique um, and about Estonian. It's Estonian. Did I mention it's an Estonian? I think I did. Um, 
uh, that's where it comes from, Estonia. So anyway, the only other thing I did differently um, was there was not a thumb gusset in this pattern. There was just um, like the bound off slit right here where you bind off a bunch of stitches and then you cast them back on to make a hole, a thumb hole. I'm not super crazy about those in mitts. I like to have a thumb gusset. So I just added my own thumb gusset where I thought I needed to. Um, in retrospect, I should have moved it over a couple more stitches towards the palm because when I have it on, it does sort of skew the color work off center. You can see it's kind of running down here instead of like right down here. Again, not a big deal because this was a practice piece anyway, so I'm not super worried about it. Um, maybe when I do the second mitt, which I will do the second mitt just for the practice again, um, maybe I'll play with moving the, the thumb over a couple of stitches just to get it right. Because I would like to make this pattern again using non-super wash, um, either my ridge top fingering. I have a bunch of small quantities of ridge top. Um, and these don't take very much yarn either. I did not take the time to weigh my leftovers before I started these since again We were kind of in a hurry to get out the door Sunday morning So I have no idea how much yarn I used of all of the colors, but the contrast colors use very very little yarn When I do the second one I will measure and that way I'll be able to put the exact amounts in my project page so anyway Again, this is called the Hilja Mitt, H-I-L-J-A, by Alex Bird, and that's A-L-E-K-S, Bird, B-Y-R-D. And of course, it'll be linked in the show notes. Um, she has her own website, so she sells her patterns both on Ravelry and on her own website. And yeah, she was delightful to take the class from. Very good. Very good instructor. I highly recommend. Um... The other project that I did not bring out to show you was my um, Hexi, my, uh, what's it called? My Busy Bee uh, wrap, which is an Afghan pattern, blanket pattern, but I'm turning it into a wrap. I have still worked on it a little bit, but I'm still on that fourth row of, uh, <laughs> I don't know what that was. Um, fourth row of Hexies that I'm attaching and um, so I didn't bring it out because it doesn't look a whole lot different. I did, however, dig out that mini that came with the yarn that I'm using for the bordering. And I have started to incorporate the use of that on bordering some of the hexes. So I I'm glad I did that because I think that'll be nice to just have them scattered around. I kind of wish I would have thought to do that earlier in the project, but I didn't and I can't go back and it's fine. <laughs> so... Anyway, that is everything with my projects. Once I finish that fourth row, I'll show it to you again. And, you know, it's gonna, I'm just going to keep adding rows as long as I can while I have the hexes. The nature mail. So we're still in Flora. Flora is going through the end of April, so you've still got a little bit of time, a little over a week left to finish your projects and submit them using the submission form. Uh, I think we have the error message issue worked out now, finally, again. Um, and if you are working and trying to get your minimum, the, the 200 grams of fiber nymph dye works yarn in, if you're doing that aspect of the make along, which is not necessary, but if you are, that's a component and you're not sure, um, if you've submitted everything or you need to, you know, verify what you've already submitted, just feel free to email me, fibernymph at gmail.com, and I'll be happy to let you know what submissions I have for you. I'm trying to figure out a good way to post everybody's submissions um, so that you can check them. I know there is a way that I should be able to do that. Um, I just haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> so I will work on that so that hopefully maybe in the second um, round you'll be able to know what you have submitted and what you haven't um, so anyway that's coming along and so I will have the first um, installment of the nature mal um, prizes to announce in the next episode because that will be after the end of April so my first episode in May uh, let's see, Zoom chat talk. I did the Zoom chat for the Allentown Virtual Fiber Festival, and if you shopped at that or came to my Zoom, thank you so much for being a part of that. I really appreciated that. That was a fun weekend. Um, 
my zoom was pretty short and thankfully my computer didn't drop my call that day <laughs> um, however that is something that I'm trying to think about as far as scheduling any more zooms because I really want to do another one with you guys like offer it for the podcast but I've got to get this internet thing worked out our internet up here has been horribly spotty um, this whole past year I mean I think our little <laughs> mountain um, internet company was not prepared for everybody being at home working and there are definite times of the day where things just drop you can tell everybody in the world is on their computer and it's happening more and more frequently but I do think part of the problem for me is my laptop my laptop's having a lot of issues these days and I finally deduced that I really need to get a new laptop Mine isn't that old. I feel like it's not old enough to feel like I need a new nap laptop, but I'm having enough problems with it, and especially now that it's started to have this connectivity issue, um, I, I need a new laptop. So I'm in that process of laptop shopping, which after bra shopping and jeans shopping is probably one of my least favorite types of shopping. I hate doing anything like that with technology because it changes so fast. Like I used to know what all of the the technical specification stuff meant, but a lot of that has changed and I don't know what all those abbreviations mean. So it's a very long and arduous process. And I got on the HP website a few days ago and you know, they have the little help desk thing there. And so I started a conversation with their help uh, little app there. I'm pretty sure I was talking to a robot <laughs> like it was a computerized response kind of thing it was it was good but I don't think it was human um, just some of the responses I like it would ask me questions and I started responding a little weirdly just to see what they would say and they did respond but they didn't quite know what to do with me but I did get a couple of recommendations, you know, as far as, because I could put in like what I was going to be using the computer, computer for and what I really needed. And then they came back with some responses. So I have to look into those a little bit more. I don't know. If any of you guys have a computer that you, like a laptop that you've purchased within the last year that you really love and is really good for, um, especially like photo editing, video processing, and can run multiple programs at one time without bogging down and choking, let me know. I'd love to know what it is because I've always either bought HPs or Dells. I had one Apple one time. I'm not interested in going to Apple. It was nice, but I, I'm not an Apple person, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, I would love recommendations if you've got them. Please share them. All right, what's next? I think all I have to do in the 90% part is now do the giveaway. So we have the Shore of You headband, and this is a pattern by Jennifer Lassonde of Jennifer Lassonde Designs, and she is also the podcaster behind the Downseller Studio audio podcast, and she now does some video, um, like vlog style videos throughout the month too, which I've really been enjoying. So I'll put all of her information in the show notes. Um, but this is a pattern that I test knit for her not long ago. And I test knit mine out of um, my Mega Base. I think I said twist last time. This is not twist. This is Mega. This is my bulky weight base. So, And this is the Silhouette colorway. So the giveaway is for a skein of this same colorway. I think I got it confused because I brought it out on Twist last time, but I actually have a skein of it set aside in um, Mega. So anyway, you'll get the correct skein of yarn and Jen is donating a copy of the pattern. So you'll get both the pattern and the yarn for the project. And I did do randomcommentpicker.com um, on last week the last podcast's comments I had said if you wanted to be entered please leave me a comment telling me something good that had happened to you in that last week and the comment picker chose EJ Carter who I'm pretty sure is Eileen 
Um, and she said, my granddaughter was visiting for spring break, spring break, and out of the blue, she said, Grammy, I love your smile. And that just warmed my heart. And that is so sweet. Um, anyway, thank you so much for entering everyone. And congratulations, EJ Carter, assumedly Eileen. Um, please contact me at fibernymph at gmail.com. Let me know that you know you won and I will get your prize out to you and I will have Jen um, get your prize out to you, the pattern part of the prize out to you as well. Um, so yay, congratulations. All right, we're gonna move on into shop news right now. Um, state of the studio, so let's see. Right now, my primary goals is to finish up all of the March 14th, the Pi Day um, Fungi Pi Die to Orders. I've got them going. I have to finish dyeing the rest of them and then they'll be getting reskinned and shipped out. I would say probably no later than early next week. So those are coming and any other orders, like custom orders that came in around that same time, I'm working on those right now. So those are all going to be going out. Um, and I'm also working on finishing up the April installment of the Backyard Bird Watchers Club. So those will also be getting shipped out by the end of this month. Um, there is going to be a Throwback Thursday update, but it's not going to be this Thursday. I was aiming for this Thursday, but that's just not in the cards. Um, instead, it will be next Thursday, so that will be April 29th. And I'm going to be doing Star Trekkie. I haven't dyed Star Trekkie up in a long time. Hopefully I will have a picture of it to put right here. <laughs> um, I had to go through my archives, but it's on my external hard drive and I didn't have a chance to do that. So anyway, um, yeah, so Star Trekkie will be up on, I'll have as much of it up as I can put up, but again, Throwback Thursday updates are usually just small batch. They're there, they're gone. Um, but anytime you see one that you like, and if you aren't able to get it in the update, I'm always happy to do it as a special order. So you just need to let me know. Um, so that will be next Thursday. However, this weekend, oh, I wanted to let you know too, there are more um, fungi pie dyed order spots as well as some of my 10th anniversary colorways, the 10 years of stripes and color, both versions. I put dye to order spots up. I put those up during the Allentown Virtual Festival and there are still some up in the shop. So if you were waiting for either of the, any of those colorways, because that's three, um, there are some spots available in the shop now. So go ahead and check that out. Um, Meanwhile, I'm going to be doing a spring cleaning sale this coming weekend. So Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, which would be what? Today's Tuesday. It's the 20th. First, we say. So the 23rd through the 25th. Um, spring cleaning sale. It'll be 25% off anything that's in stock. So die to orders don't count. But anything in stock in the shop will be 25% off with the coupon code SPRINGCLEAN25, which I will hopefully remember to put right down here. Um, you can use that coupon code. And as always, um, US orders of $50 or more ship for free. Um, yeah, and like I said, and it's for anything that is in stock. So diet orders don't count, custom orders don't count, and um, it's not applicable to gift certificates either. So. Anyway, that will be this weekend. I love doing my spring cleanings. I usually do it closer to the end of May, um, but I think I'm gonna do it now just because I can and it will be fun. And my mom is coming up. She gets here Friday and so I know I'm not gonna be able to die for an actual shop update. So I thought this will give you guys something. If you like a little bit of an extra bonus, you can take advantage of the sale. Um, I did mention last time, I think I remember to mention, about my holiday countdown sets for this year. They will be going on sale probably closer to June than May. Um, I have learned that I'm not going to be able to get the 10 gram mini skeins from my supplier in time for me to put the pre-orders up. I don't like to do pre-orders for things unless I know I have the actual yarn in hand because I've been bitten by that before, um, assuming I could get things in after the fact. And that's not always the case, and especially right now, because we're still working with shortages. So um, I'm still gonna be able to do them, but it's going to mean that I'm gonna be hand winding off 10 gram minis on my own, which is incredibly more labor intensive and time intensive. Um, 
and that does affect the price of the sets unfortunately because of the amount of time I have to put in doing that but I haven't I have not run the numbers yet um, I still need to do that so I think what's gonna end up happening um, and it also does kind of put a limit on how many I can do because humanly possible it's only possible for me to do so many that way um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put an initial um, you know offering of them up probably in early June and then later towards fall, if I am able to get the 10 gram skeins in at that point, I may offer more. Um, as it is right now, they're probably not going to be coming in until late summer, early fall, unfortunately, to my supplier. So that's where things are with that. I, so I am still doing them. It's just how I'm doing them is going to have to be a little bit different. So again, stay tuned for more details. I will share with you when I know more things. Um, okay, so that brings us to what is bringing me joy lately. Let's see, lots of things. That, that Rosamina class was really fun. I really enjoyed that. That made me so excited to take it. And now my, it has my brain working and I'm thinking about like how I could adapt that to different things. Um, I'm thinking about like I wonder if you could use beading on that. I think that would be so much fun to string beads on there, especially for shorter floats. So I don't know. I'm going to play with that. Um, what else has been going on? Beautiful weather. <laughs> Short of us getting the S word tomorrow. Um, I've really been enjoying that. I've been outside a lot. Bill and I came out here last Saturday and we cleaned all the windows outside, even the high ones that are hard to do by yourself. So that was a team effort. But even doing that kind of stuff outside is fun when it's nice out. Um, I got to see a girlfriend of mine who I haven't seen in ages. She's somebody I went to high school with. We used to be super close. And then, you know, you kind of drift and everything. But she doesn't live too far from her. But she started selling Mary Kay, which might sound odd. But, like, I got super excited when I found out she was selling it. Not because I use a lot of Mary Kay products. Um, but her mom used to sell Mary Kay. And her mom has passed away many years ago now but her mom used to sell Mary Kay and she's the woman who I got my first Mary Kay from back in the day probably back in high school when she first started selling it when I was in high school not when she was in high school <laughs> obviously um, but yeah so whenever my friend Tracy started selling it I'm like oh, yay yes I'll buy from you um, I, I get I use their cleanser mostly their cleanser and their concealer I really really like um, other than that, I don't use a whole lot of stuff from them anymore, but whenever I found out she was saying, I'm like, yes, I'll definitely place an order. And then she got excited because I was her very first order after her launch for, she did a virtual launch party, which I was not able to attend, but I was still her first, first order. So she was super excited and she actually drove up and dropped it off. So I got to spend a couple of hours chatting with her last weekend too. So that was so much fun because haven't, again, haven't seen her in ages. So anyway, um, what else? I'm, I'm really looking forward to my mom coming up. It'll be so nice. She's going to be here for over a week. They're getting here Friday. Um, I think I mentioned this last time too. And then her husband's going to take a few days and go down to West Virginia and visit his brothers. So she'll be here and it'll just be her and I hanging out probably. Um, so I'm going to try to minimize how much I work. I'm going to still have to do some work while she's here. But um, I want to do some fun things with her too. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, definitely looking forward to that. And then um, just kind of, I've been focusing or reflecting on the concept of having a different perspective on things. Like looking at, remembering to look at things from a different perspective. Because in my headspace, I can get like really caught up on like getting stuck looking at things in one way and getting really frustrated and what have you. And then um, I, I was play, playing with one of my Oracle decks the other day and the card that I drew was perspective um, from the deck that I had. And I, I did a, this is not what I was gonna talk about, but I'll share it with you anyway. Um, I had seen a video on doing an Oracle, like drawing from both an Oracle deck and 
tarot deck at the same time. So drawing one oracle card and having that be the theme of your reading and then drawing two other cards from the tarot deck and seeing how that could relate to the theme. And so I did that and it came up as perspective and both of the cards that I drew from the tarot deck really worked well with that. And I, I can't even remember which cards they were now to tell you which suits, <laughs> but um, yeah, they were very interesting. Um, and so it gave me a lot to think about as far as perspective and remembering that my perspective is not the only perspective and to maybe step back and take a look at things from other perspectives. And when I'm like focusing on a problem to try to see other angles that I can look at it from. So that's been really helpful. I love doing stuff like that. I love you know, getting a different perspective. It just happens that this one was on perspective. So I think that's why I really like tarot cards and oracle deck cards. It's not anything about like telling the future. That's not what it's about. It's just, it helps me think about things in different ways that maybe I wouldn't have otherwise thought of. So yeah, that's been something. I think that's probably it. <laughs> so do you like my earrings? These are new. I'll show you these are really cool because and I don't remember the name of the artist I got them off of Etsy but um, they're trees but the one has a, a crescent moon and the other one has a sun on, or a star I'm sorry not a sun see them are they fun so those are new they're bringing me joy <laughs> and my necklace is actually the first present that my husband ever gave me when we were dating it was for Valentine's Day it's a rhodochrosite pendant. I don't wear it a lot because I don't wear a lot of gold colored jewelry, but I like to wear it every once in a while because it's special. He gave it to me. Anyway, now I'm just babbling and I feel like I'm getting hot and the last thing I need to do is get sunburned again because my lips are finally starting to heal from the last time I got sunburned. So I'm going to go in soon. Anyway, I hope you've had a really good last couple of weeks. Um, since we talked last and I hope you are enjoying have you learned anything new like I'm all excited about this Rosamina um, technique have you learned anything new that you're excited about I'd love to hear about it if you have um, have you gotten anything new have you talked to an old friend that you maybe haven't talked to lately have you thought I'm sorry the wind is blowing so much that it's blowing my camera um, have you discovered a new perspective on something that maybe hadn't crossed your mind before? Share it with me. Share it with everybody. I'd love to hear about it. I really appreciate those of you who leave comments even when I'm not doing drawings. I do try to at least heart your comments even if I don't have a chance to reply. Um, I'm usually looking at them on my phone and it's not always the easiest for me to actually reply to comments on my phone. I try to wait until I'm on my laptop, but again, my laptop's been acting really goofy lately, so that hasn't been easy either, but I do read them all. I try to at least give them a heart and I try to respond whenever I'm able to. So please know that I do appreciate um, your interaction. Um, you can always interact with me through the Ravelry group or through the Fiber Nymph Dye Works blog. Um, you can always email me if you would like to interact, fibernymph at gmail.com. Um, I'm on Instagram at fibernymph Dye Works and my personal account is at fibernymph. Um, I'm working on finding a way that I can post project information not on Ravelry. I mean, I'm not going to quit doing it on Ravelry, but I want to do it in an additional place um, that will be more information than just in the show notes, but um, and include pictures and things. I'm working on that. That's part of another project that I'm working on aside from my regular website. Um, so stay tuned about that. I hope to have news about that by the next time I record. Um, it's going to take a little while to get that going, but I'm really wanting to find another way to share information about my projects and not just my fiber arts projects. I want to be able to share information about other things too that really doesn't fill or fit into the purview of this particular podcast. Um, because I'm feeling drawn to do that. I've been feeling that for a while and just trying to work out the details of how to make that happen 
most easily. But I especially want to make my project information, my you know, my knitting and spinning and fiber related project information available to everyone apart from on Ravelry because I know Ravelry is not accessible to everybody. So that's important to me to be able to do that. So I'm working on it and I'll let you know once I know better how that's going to work out. Anyway, that's it for today. I'm going to go in and get this processing and edited, edited and then processing. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your day. I hope you are not getting the S word unless you really would like it. <laughs> I hope you're getting some nice warm weather or some nice fall weather. Um, I'll talk to you again in early May and then I can tell you all about my mom's visit. Um, take care and keep and doing what brings you joy. Bye.